Good evening from Southeast Asia, from the Philippines, from Manila, South Pacific, somewhere not in the West. We'd be talking about girls, <clears throat> and we're talking about girls because that's the number one thing that people, usually guys, ask me about. I've been here, Southeast Asia, for <laughs> you know, like two or three lifetimes, longer than almost everybody else I know. And I know far more than I should about girls. And I'm going to tell you stuff about girls so that you can avoid them. <laughs> you know, just get a cat. Really? Really? I'm serious. Get a cat. Get a crocodile. Get a baby crocodile. You're going to be far happier. I am deadly, earnestly serious. Okay. Girls in Southeast Asia. They ain't like girls in the West. Girls in the West are terrible. I hate them. I won't have one. Girls in Southeast Asia are several orders of magnitude worse. Unless you... I don't know. You you win the lotto. You win the girl lotto and you, and you find one that's not horrible. But that's, you know, have you won the lotto in, in, in the Western country? No, you have not. And you ain't gonna hear either. So, <clears throat> talking about girls, we're, we're talking about why you, why you don't want one. What do you do? Guys are so stupid. I was too. I wasn't as stupid as most guys, but I was still stupid when I first came here. Okay. You can go anywhere. YouTube, you can go anywhere. You can find 10,000... Oh, bug, bug. 10,000 videos about scammy girls in Southeast Asia. Most of the guys making the video... I, I just watched one from some twerp. Went through this whole long spiel about how he's going to warn you about the girls and, and, and teach you about their scams and, you know, on and on and... Uh, He's going to protect you because he, he's so worldly and wise. And then at some point in his, in his video, he says, you know, because I've been here three months. Oh, suck you, you dipshit. <sighs> Hell. Okay. Oh, God. I, I, I read another, uh, no, I saw another uh, video of, uh, about uh, Kambusha, Cambodia. And I'm Penn. Some woman proclaimed herself the expert on Phnom Penh and all things Cambodian. Come here. And I suffered through that drill for a while. And, um, you know, towards the end, she said she knows all this stuff because she, she was there on a tourist visa for 60 days. Huh? What the hell? What the hell? Okay. All right. Holy crap. Um... My experience in Southeast Asia is 10 solid years, 365 days a year, times 10 in Thailand, and then lots of years around other places, Laos, Vietnam, Singapore, Hong Kong, Myanmar. Uh, what else? What else is there? I forget. Kambusha, mostly Phnom Penh. Um, I did that region, I did that whole mainland region over there more than the vast majority of guys have ever done it because I don't do anything halfway. Um, I lived in the uh, Philippines 10 years ago, all over the Philippines. I didn't like it, partly because of the scammy girls. And I left it and I went to Thailand found more scammy girls and then you know eventually I got tired of that not, 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 not so much partly because of the girls but partly because the government just went stark raving mad after Prayut shot his way into power okay so I know about the girls of Southeast Asia I'm sure I don't know everything but I know more than the vast majority of guys um, I do these videos periodically. 
Uh, if, if I were to tell you everything I know <clears throat> about girls of South, Southeast Asia, the, the video would be, I don't know, 8, 10, 15 hours long. So when I get riled up about some particular issue regarding the girls <laughs> of Southeast Asia, then I, 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 I'm just sort of compelled to make another video. And I talk about different aspects of things from different perspectives. And I remember different things and scams and <clears throat> God. Um, so you're an expat. You have killed uh, the little woman, put her in the freezer. She was bitchy and nasty. And you got tired of it. So she's, uh, you know, she's gone. Mm -hmm. never, you, you, know, you, you borrowed your brother-in-law's backhoe and you put her out in the back. And you, you went way down deep, you know. They usually don't dig more than about five feet because they know people are lazy. And uh, don't dig very deep holes. But you go down 15 feet, you know. It's hard, hard, hard for the FBI to, to, to get down there and find that freezer, you know. And, you, and, you, and you, you put the whole freezer in there. You sacrifice the freezer, you know. Not just the body. Because the freezer's got DNA and shit on it. It's got to go. It's got to go. So really the hole has to be, let's say, 17, 18 feet to be safe, you know. <clears throat> you drop that puppy down there, cover it in, roll back and forth over the top for an hour, you know, an hour. And, uh, you know, you pretty, pretty much could do Okay, uh, all right. So you, you've done that. In, in, in whatever, whatever way you've chosen, you've divorced her. She ran away with your brother, your business partner, whatever the hell. It doesn't matter. Good riddance. She's gone. Um, if she died, like mine did, then I'm sorry. If she was a good one. If she wasn't a good one, then congratulations. Sorry, not sorry. But if she was a good one, like mine, pretty much good, then I'm sorry. I'm sorry for me, and I'm sorry for you if you lost a good one. Uh, for some insane reason, you have this idea that you want another one. Well, I do. I, I, I want it. I want a good one, like like the one I had. You know, it doesn't have to be look like her or nothing like that. I don't care. But I wanted to have a good heart. She was she was a strong, smart German girl, and I respected her endlessly. And I, I want one I can respect. You know. Okay, and you do too. We presume. Well, no, 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 no. I take it back. I take it back. No, 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 no. The majority of you horn dogs, especially the Brits, you don't care as long as it's technically female and more or less uh, humanoid in form. They got the blow up one, ones now. You know, you just get that thing. Amazon's probably got them. I don't know. You'd be happier in the end. Really? Okay. So you've decided anyway that you're. You're an expat or you want to be an expat. You don't like the West. Nobody likes the West. Nobody likes the West. You're crazy if you do. <sighs> um, the only thing I liked about the West was the relative freedom of being able to fly airplanes. That was a lot of fun. I miss that all around the world. I've, I've been around the world two and a half times now, over many, many years. Um, that's the one thing I miss more than anything else about the U.S. It's airplanes, flying, freedom freedom to fly. Uh, so, if, you know, if you're one of those guys, then, okay, you're going to miss you're going to miss your Western country, probably the U.S. Um, but if you're not one of those guys, there ain't nothing to miss. I miss Alaska a little bit. I miss the, the uh, Southwest deserts a little bit, hiking, exploring, Jumping over rattlesnake, stuff like that. Um, okay. You figured out your finances. And you're, and you're thinking you want to go to somewhere in Southeast Asia because the girls look hot. Well, they are. 
hottest girls on earth, I think. Uh, if you like tan skin, small structure, usually not obese. Yeah, find that in the U.S. Um, you're probably going to like Asian girls, South, Southeast Asian girls. To my notion, the prettiest ones in all of Southeast Asia are the Vietnamese. They're also the crazy est. I recommend staying the hell away from them at all costs. Don't even consider it. Don't even go to Vietnam. Don't even freaking go there. No. Uh, the next prettiest ones are the Thais. Um, Myanmar, Burma's got a lot of uh, pretty girls. Um, Cambodia has a lot of pretty girls. Lao, Lao or Laos, depending on where you're saying that from, has plenty of pretty girls. Uh, Philippines has some pretty girls, but they, uh, the, the vast majority of them have a weight problem. It's uh, it's partly diet, partly genetics. They have a weight problem. I'm sorry, they do. If you don't like weight, I I happen to be one of those unfortunate guys who c I cannot tolerate any overweight at all. I have never had overweight girlfriends. I couldn't tolerate them. I didn't want to touch them. Uh, sorry, it's just a personal thing. Some guys like red hair. Some guys don't. Some guys like tall. Some guys like short. Some guys like thin, some guys like fat. I don't like fat. Oh, we got bugs. We got bugs tonight. Probably a dead body somewhere. Jeez. All right. Um, if you're an expat or soon to be an expat and you figured out your finances, you figured out how you're going to live here in Southeast Asia, um, you're going to be thinking about girls and you're going to be thinking about how are you going to meet one. Uh, my experience with South Southeast Asian girls over all these long interminable years has not reached four figures. Have not. I said have, has not reached four figures. Okay. Every single girl that I dated or took up with, lived with, whatever, was one that I hoped would be, quote unquote, the one. I was not a punter. I was not a dating guy. I hate dating for the sake of dating. Oh, God, I hate it. I won't do it. At the very first recognition of a problem in the relationship that means it cannot go the distance forever and ever and ever. I'm out. I'm done. They're gone. I, I will not stay in any relationship that's not going to go the distance. I, I won't, I won't, I won't do it. Um, lots and lots of guys are not like that. One of the biggest problems is I think probably the vast majority of guys coming from the Western countries are so starved for attractive female companionship that they will take just about any companionship that comes along. An hour? <laughs> That's okay. I'll pay. I'll pay. I don't care. You love me hour. You love me long time. 90 minutes. Hell. Okay. Anyway, you're going to be sitting there if you're not, if you're not, well, even if you're here. You got language problems, you got culture problems, you got all kinds of problems meeting girls. You don't have a friend network here, probably. So you're starting to think, uh, hey, hey, maybe that, maybe that dating sites, you know, maybe, uh, maybe that can work. No, Paisano. You're holding up your phone right there, right now, and you're looking at some dating sites, uh, Southeast Asian girls, you know, or let me slap that sucker right out of your hand, because this way lies madness and bankruptcy. And in some cases, like in Thailand, murder. Yours. They like to kill you in Thailand. First, no, first they like to castrate you. And they do it all the time. And then they'll kill you. They do it all the time in Thailand. 
not so much in other countries, but in Thailand, they, I, because Thailand, there's no real moral compass. Thailand is Buddhist. And uh, if you do a bad thing, you're not going to hell to burn through all eternity like you are if you do the same thing in the Philippines, in the Catholic country. You're just going to have bad karma. And if you're bad karma, if you, if you don't want that bad karma, you can go work it off. You can go to the temple. You can do some good deeds. They call it making merit. One of the big common things is you, uh, you, know, you kill your husband. You go to the to the Buddhist temple outside of Bangkok and uh, you wash their latrines for well, you you commit to two weeks. You know, of course you don't do that. You do that for you, you do it lackadaisically for three days, and and then and then on the fourth day you're you're not feeling good. You know, so you can't quite make it. But you think about it for that full two weeks. You think about cleaning those latrines. And that erases that bad karma. So that can even be done uh, in, a, in a premeditated uh, way. If you think you're going to kill your husband, you go there for a few days or a week and you clean the latrines and then you, you, you have an excess in your bank account of, uh, of karma. And you go off that bastard when he's sleeping. Ain't nothing going to happen to you. Okay, so that's Thailand. Um, Philippines, they don't do that because they're still scared of going to hell. You know, so they, different cultures for different places. But dating sites. Um, someday I'm going to do a video on, I, I'm going to I'm going to cover the eyes and I'm going to cover the knees. Do a video, I'm going to flash up, you know, probably a hundred different pictures taken from dating sites and say, you don't want this one because, you don't want this one because, and we're going to go all the way through it, and there's not going to be probably one single one there that you even want to talk to, but you are going to talk to them anyway, because you're stupid, like me. I still talk to them, even though I know the odds. I know I'm playing a rigged lottery, but I still talk to them, and it leads to nothing, ever. And it never, ever will, because they're scammers. Okay, the girls you meet on the street are going to be scammers. To a large degree, probably 85%. The girls you meet on the dating sites are going to be scammers. Probably to 99.6%. Big difference there. Um... Just don't go on the dating sites. Just uh, we'll do a whole thing on dating sites, but just don't don't go there. Don't go there. Don't go there. There are all kinds of red flags and telltales that will warn you about approaching scammers in all these different countries. Um, they all revolve around one particular issue. That's not surprisingly, money. That's the uh, common denominator of all this stuff. They simply want money. They don't have any. Yes, they are really, really, really poor. I spent a few days with a girl lately. Uh, her wage was, uh, let's see, what was it? Two, four hundred. Two hundred. So four dollars a day here in uh, Manila. Four dollars a day. She has two sons. Husband ran away. Four dollars U.S. a day. That's her wage. No medical, no nothing. Uh, no days off. If she wants a day off, she doesn't get the four bucks. No, I'm sorry. I misquoted that. It was three dollars. No, I misquoted it again. It was two dollars and fifty cents. I'm sorry. Two dollars and fifty cents U.S. When I do the conversion from uh, Philippine peso. Two dollars and fifty cents a day. Lives with her sister with her two sons. Um, and they look around them and they see how other people just wantonly throw money away, especially expats. And they want some of that. And they find it hard to get some of that. And so they become more and more desperate. And it gets to the point where if they had any moral fiber at all, it, it just evaporates. It just smoke in the wind out the ass. It's gone. Moral fiber is gone. 
they want to survive first. I have found throughout the world that almost all people have the morality they can afford. And as that ability to afford morality declines, so does the morality. And at some point they become snarling animals and they'll take whatever they can get by any means they have to. Um, Filipino girls make less than almost all the other girls in Southeast Asia, so they are closer to that point, I think. Um, the way that these girls in these different countries approach scamming as a profession varies a little bit by country and culture. Um, I have found in Thailand that the percentage of scamming girls runs around 99.6%. They're almost all scammers. And I have horrific stories about them. Um, in the Philippines, I think the percentage of female scammers roughly is about, let's say, 88%. Yeah, no, I'm not bullshitting you. Really, that's... You can't conceive of that, because I couldn't either. I came here in, in my distant past from a federal law enforcement background dealing with, essentially, scammers. And I thought I knew a thing or two about scammers. Well, I did. I knew more than almost all Westerners knew about scammers. But I was still unprepared for Southeast Asian scammers. Um, you can go around and watch videos and stuff and, and make yourself a little notebook list. Make notes on the back of your hand. Tattoo them on your frickin' arm. What to watch for as red flags of female scammers in Southeast Asia. Uh, it's all going to revolve around money. Um, it used to be in the old days that they would just ask you for money. Well, they, they still do that. They'll just say, hey, can I have some money? Please? No, they won't say please. And they won't say thank you. They'll say, can I? Well, no, no, no. In the old days, they just asked if they could have it. What the hell? Something just shot at me. I don't know. Um, that was a little disconcerting. That was my fridge. Getting ready to blow up. Um, now they have learned that the expats have learned and just flat out demanding money doesn't work like it did in the old days. So they'll say, um, hey, can I, can I borrow? So, can I, we, we got a sick buffalo, you know. That was the big tie thing there. there. The buffalo back on the farm was sick and he had to go to the buffalo doctor and, and they needed money to treat it or it was going to die. And it, they actually did that. When I first got to Southeast Asia, they, I, I got hit with that exact thing. Buffalo sick and, and well, they, now they don't even use buffaloes. And they, they, they try to still use that scam, but they will, they will come up with little things like my mom doesn't have food and, uh, you know, my sister has to go to the witch. Again. Again? Really? Again? Little sister has to go to the witch doctor to get treated for a common cold. Can I, can I have money? Uh, now they will say, can I borrow money? Can I borrow 5,000 peso? Can I borrow 10,000 peso? We can't pay the rent. You know, we're going to be sleeping in the gutter. No, they're not. They've been surviving for years without you. They'll find a way. Um... And it has evolved beyond that a little bit also. You get hooked up with a girl. The Filipinas are smoother at this than most other Southeast Asians. They take a little more time. They're, they're, they've learned to play the long game. They will take more 
time to ingratiate themselves into your life. And they have kind of sort of learned that asking to borrow might put you off. You know, that might jinx the whole deal. So <clears throat> increasingly, what I've seen over the years is that increasingly they will just mention things that they be needing. Oh, my phone is really terrible. And I've seen cases where they will actually intentionally drop their phone somewhere when they think you're not looking and, and break it. And say, yeah, it's a shit phone. But if it's broken and it doesn't work at all, then you're far more likely to buy them a new phone. Um, and they need this. And their, their mom, my mom is sick. And, and you say, oh, do you, do you need some money? No, it's okay. I don't want to take money from you. I, I don't want to be a Filipina girl taking money from the from the foreigner. Well, well, maybe one time. How much can you give me? Because I, I think the doctor will be 10,000 pesos. So that's about 200 bucks. Um, in the old, old days, I contributed often and a lot. Um, I didn't just do it when they asked for it. I would go to their hometown or whatever, out in the province, out in the bush, in the farm, on the mountain, and look at their situation and see, yeah, they're living out there in 96 uh, degree heat, and they don't, the refrigerator's broken, and they can't keep food, and uh, the snake meat's smelling really, really bad, you know, kind of difficult to choke that down. Okay, I'll buy them a fridge. Okay, uh, I would do that. In a few cases, you would do that. And then on the next trip, a month or two later, you would find that fridge uh, humming along out in the snake shed. Didn't break down. They just wanted another one, a better one, a newer one, a bigger one. Uh, in almost every case, that's the kind of thing you're going to be up against. Almost every case. Um, so you're going to watch for the neediness. They start hinting that they need something, that they want something, their mom needs some medicine. You better have thought this through before it happens. And you better be prepared. If they catch you at a weak moment, which their master's at, uh, sometimes you, you're going to be all flummoxed. You're not, you're not going to know what to say exactly. And you need to, oh, okay, here's 5,000 pesos. Because you just want the problem to go away and, and you want them to love you so much. And, um, we are not ready to kick their ass out to the street right right now today. Not right right not not in the next twenty minutes. You know. So okay okay, we, I'll give you the five thousand pesos and, and uh, I'll think about this later on and I'll decide what I should do next. No, you think about it now before you ever get involved in it. Um, I had a friend come to visit me in Thailand, and he went around with a number of girls over a few months, and he would tell them flat out in the first five or ten minutes when he met them. If you ever ask me for one bot, we're done. I will not give you one bot. And if you ask me for one bot, we're done. You won't even get free dinners anymore. And of the ones that he told that to, they didn't ask him for one bot. Um, I kind of chastised him and I, I, I thought that was a little harsh. You know, I mean, look at the culture, look at that they don't have anything. And his counter was that if he saw their situation and he deemed the need to be real, he would, as his own choice, give or not give. And that's uh, the point I eventually arrived at. Forget about the whole borrowing thing, forget about the loan thing, you're never going to get back, you're not going to get one peso, not one bot, not one stang. You're not going to get nothing back ever, not ever, not ever. 
uh, you make it a gift. Or you can say, okay, if, if I buy you this for your mom, you will owe me 100 kisses. Something like that. Something to... And you probably won't get those either, but... Uh, man, watch out for the girls who start probing to try to get a handle on how much money you have, how much money you make, how much money you have access to. If you see the slightest hint of that, get them gone. Now, lots of guys will tell you this. Lots of guys who've been here. Almost nobody's been here and around as much as me. You can listen to guys until the cows come home telling you to get them gone for these various reasons. And you're like, yeah, yeah okay, that sounds like good advice. Um, but, 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 you know, I, I'm smarter than the average bear and, and I'll make that decision when I get there. No, bullshit. No. Make that decision now. Listen to the people who've been here and who, who've been through it because they know and they're trying to save your big flabby ass. It just hurts me to see these guys get taken and taken and taken and taken and taken. I had to unfriend a really good Australian friend because he was with a bar girl. And she treated him like dog shit. And she scammed him and conned him and lied to him endlessly. And I would bring proof to him. And he would acknowledge it. And he still took her back to Australia. And of course that blew up. She got into him for a huge amount of money. He had to send her back to Thailand. Um, and our friendship ended over that because at that time I was afraid of what I might do to correct the situation. So I just had to get away from him. I just had to disconnect from him. And I never, never was able to get back together with him. Uh, man. So girls in Southeast Asia, um, I have found the Thai, thai girls to be, as I said, the scammiest. They're, they're nearly all scammers. Even thieves. Even murderesses. Um, you don't go to Thailand looking for a wife. You do not do it. You go there to party and make a fool of yourself. Go with the prostitutes because they're almost all technical prostitutes in Thailand. Almost all of them. All, all so close to all that you can't even, it's, it's, it's just that close to being all. In the Philippines, that's not quite the case, you know, 86, 88 uh, percent. They're not, okay, the, the, the Catholicism pounded the anti-prostitute thing into their heads pretty thoroughly. There's not nearly as many prostitutes in the Philippines as there are in Thailand. Uh, Thailand is number one for them, period. If that's all you want, just go there. Go, you know, just don't even listen. Just, just turn this off. Just go get prostitutes until they make you crazy and take all your money. And, you know, I, I don't care. Um, the Filipinos are not as much flat-out blatant prostitutes. Um, but if you go meet one, and you date him, go out to dinner a couple of times, sleep with him, even if you don't. It's expected that you better give him some money. 
And if you don't, then you're a bad man. I wish I had a magical, a magic wand, and I could, I could, I could go. Doing, and, and all of this knowledge would go into your head because I, I, I could save hundreds of thousands of guys so much pain and hardship and heartache and money and. When I first uh, came to Southeast Asia, somebody said to me, if any of these girls opens their mouth, that means they're lying. And I thought, oh, that's pretty jaded. You know, I, I know liars. I work federal law enforcement. I, that's, what, that's what I dealt with was liars and scum. But, uh, come on, you know, come on. Uh, you know, cut, cut them a little slack, you know, they're, they're not that bad. You're just some jaded old bastard, you know. No, they were right. They were right. They were right. Um, lying in Southeast Asia, it's a little more frowned on in the Philippines than it is in the other countries, but it's not that bad of a thing. In Thailand, it's not really hardly a bad thing at all. You, 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 you go think about cleaning a latrine and that cleans up your karma, you know. <sighs> Who cares? Done deal. Um, all right. I've harped on this enough. I'm, I'm trying to be a little bit driven in this in the hopes that by pouring all this water onto a rock, the rock being your skull, a little tiny bit of it somewhere is going to soak into a pore, and you'll take it to heart, and it'll save you a lot of money and trouble and all kinds of other stuff, maybe your life. Um, this is the major theme for all guys who come to Southeast Asia. This is this is the biggest crack in the cultural chasm that there is. There's all kinds of cracks in the cultural chasm, you know. But this is the biggest one, is the, the problem with guys, Western guys and Southeast Asian girls. This is the biggest number one issue. And so it's something we just have to keep harping on and harping on from different perspectives, from different angles, in different ways. And that's just, that's kind of my mission in life here. Um, if you had a rocket and you zoomed off to uh, one of the moons of, uh, I don't know, wherever there's moons, Uranus or something, I don't know, and you landed there and you found out that it was uh, populated by these really creepy, slithering monster things, and, 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 they, and they had this, this weird ability to change their appearance and get close to you and steal your stuff, you know. And then they killed you. Stuff like that. It, it, okay. And, and so you live there and you get all these guys back on Earth and they're saying, Hey, man, I, I want to go there because it sounds cool. It sounds exotic. And, and you're saying, hey, hey, oh, well, yeah, you know, there, there's some cool stuff here, but, you know, we got these monsters, we got these slithering, slimy reptilian things, and they, let me tell you about them, you know. And the guys are like, no, 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 yeah, you, you're, you're, you're drinking some kind of Uranus moonshine shit. You don't know what you're talking about because nothing like that in the universe exists, you know. Okay, I'm that guy out there on that little moon trying to tell you stuff. God, it's so critically important important that you uh, that you take this to heart. Just say no to the online apps. Just say, hell no. Don't go there. You want to meet girls? You make friends with other expats and they have wives and they have girlfriends. You can get recommendations. Uh, look for ones that have families where you can go meet 
the family, and the family has a little bit of money, so they're not nickel-ing and diming you to death. Um, and they go to church. I'm not a religious guy, but it's a good sign when they go to church. Be really, really careful of the ones with tattoos. Um, one or two little tasteful tattoos is kind of sort of okay. It depends a little bit on the culture. In Thailand, tattoos really don't mean much. They mean a little bit. They, you know, it's kind of a bad sign. In the Catholic culture, in the Philippines, tattoos is a pretty bad thing. It's a pretty bad indicator. It indicates a moral fiber that might be kind of porous. Um, one or two tasteful tattoos, maybe. I, w I would consider a girl with one or two tasteful tattoos. If she's covered in them, no. No. It means that moral barrier wall thing is broken, smashed to dust. It doesn't exist. And you don't want that in your life. Um, okay. Just because this is getting approaching my time limit, we're going to cut it, and I'm going to do I'm going to do more of these. So watch for them. Um, we're going to we're going to drill down to more specifics in some of the uh, some of the scams and how they will approach you with them and how they how smooth they are when they're slipping that needle into your heart and you, you hardly feel the little twinge but then over time you just get weaker and weaker and you don't know why man if you're a western guy and you're lonely because you because you killed your wife, you know, or whatever the hell happened to her. Um, loneliness is going to be pervasive in the Western countries because there's not a lot to choose from in the Western countries. There's not. You know that. You know that's why you're thinking of bugging out. Um, and you think that Southeast Asia is going to be the answer to all your loneliness problems. Almost every guy thinks that. The truth and the reality is that you might be lonelier in Southeast Asia than in your own country. Because in your own country, at least you can go somewhere, you can go to Denny's or something, have a conversation with a waitress, you're on the same wavelength. You can have two, three minutes of relative peace and understanding, comprehension with some, some waitress in Denny's that say, yeah, it's not going to turn into anything, but you can say, hey, how you doing? You know, you remember... Uh, that building down the street, ah, they tore that down, that's too bad, you know, and you, and you can have a little conversation like that, and it, and it leaves you feeling a little teensy, tiny, little bit better about your life. You're not going to have those conversations in Southeast Asia. You're not going to have those conversations. There is no common culture at all. There's zero. And when you go along for a period of years, and, and the little exchanges and interactions you do have, are negative, you start thinking, oh, hell, what have I done? You sold everything back in the world, told all your friends to F off, you got nothing to go back for, you can't afford to go back, and here you are, water, water everywhere, but not a drop to drink. That was the old sailor's, I don't know what it was, the end of a poem or something, where, the, you know, out in the old square rigger sailing around the world and, and something happened, they ran out of water, they're so thirsty, they're dying, they can't stand it, they, they're just dying of thirst, they're looking around, seeing endless ocean forever and ever and ever, but you drink a cup of it, you die. 
And that's the situation with females in Southeast Asia. They are largely, not completely, but almost exclusively poison. Poison in every way. Now, there are good ones. I used to, I used to canvas guys in Thailand. Almost every phalang, white guy that I met in Thailand over 10 years, I would say, hey, um, I'm just doing this kind of a personal poll thing. Uh, you know, how many guys uh, do you know of that, that are happy with their Thai girlfriend wives? And it ran about 99%. Say none. Not themselves, not anybody they know. Uh, maybe 1% would say, yeah, I, I got one. She's okay, you know. She's not great, but she's okay. She, You know, we're, we're going along. That was 1%. Okay, in the Philippines, you ask that same question. Um, <clears throat> you're going to get about 80% will kind of grumble and say, well, you know, it's, it's kind of rough. You know, we, we've got problems. And 20%, they're going to say, well, you know, it's okay. It's not so bad. It's okay. And, and, you, and you're going to get a few percent, 5%. Maybe seven percent. They're going to say, "My God, it's great! I so I'm so happy. I've never been this happy in my life. I never knew I could be this happy in my life." So that's vastly higher than what you get in Thailand or most other countries. Um, so Philippines is better if you want to meet somebody, but it's sure as hell not good. Now I've been in Philippines over a year. This last time here. Um, I got involved with a, uh, an online dating website that I thought was the best online dating website I had ever been involved with. And I had been involved with plenty, but this was the best one I ever saw. And, and, and in some ways it still is. Um, for a little over a year, I've had a kind of a, just a normal mundane ad on that thing. And I have gotten responses from an average of 25 to 75 girls a day. And that has stayed pretty consistent. It's probably down to 50 a day now after a year. Uh, and that seems like, oh my God, that's a horrendous amount of girls. And, and it is. Uh, my problem is that probably... 85 to 90 percent are over my red line of weight. Quite hefty girls. It, it's, a, it's a genetic thing here. Partly and partly diet. Um, I, I, just, I can't go there. I can't. I can be, you know, perfectly fine friends, but I don't want to kiss them. Okay. And in a real complete relationship, kissing is kind of Part of the deal, you know, kind of like it. Kiss my cat too, but you know, she doesn't like it. So, you know. um, so it's it's been a very very productive dating site. Um, out of that sheer massive volume of girls over a year, how many have I met? from that dating site. How many do you think I've met? Okay, so let's say 15% uh, of them are acceptable to me physically. So 15% of, uh, you know, 50 a day is whatever. I'm not going to do them. Pretty simple math, but I'm not going to do it. Um, so let's say... Let's, just round it off. Let's say 10 a day are acceptable to me physically. And I, and I look at them. We trade pictures. We trade videos. We, we, we do live stream. Um, no, what's the other word for it? Uh, F FaceTime, whatever. Um, and I think, yeah, this is, you know, okay, okay. The, the physical side of this, the attractiveness side of this, yeah, it's a pretty well done deal. That's fine. You know, I, I, I do not consider myself particularly picky. 
uh, you know, I, I can't do, I can't do five feet, one inch and 200 pounds. I can't do it. I'm sorry. I can't do it. I can't. I, I, I kind of sort of would like to, but I can't. Um, so let's say I, I'm talking to 10 a day that where the physical side of it is, is okay. Um, now you run into all kinds of weird other kinds of problems. You know, they're scammers. They, they're asking you for money right off the top. They're prostitutes, you know, so that weeds out quite a few, but Still, out of all the ones that I've talked to over the last year, how many have I met? And, and if, I can, if I can solve the problem of, you know, the equation of physical attraction, and they're not too crazy, and they're not asking me for money right in the first two messages, you know, if we go along like that, I will ask them to meet, you know, fairly quickly. And how many have I met? The ones that actually showed up or that had time to meet or that didn't just ghost me and, you know, they're talking to a hundred other guys and they're sure that the next guy and the next guy and the next guy and the next guy are there, they know for sure that those guys have more money and they're a little bit better looking and, uh, you know, that's a better catch, and so they'll they'll just dump you. They'll just ghost you instantly. They're they're on to the next guy, and the next guy, and the next guy. And so they're talking to a hundred guys in a week, and they never meet one. How many have I met in a year? I've met three. Three. Okay. One showed up was a trans, transsexual, transvestite, whatever you want to call them. She she had lied on the app in her bio <coughs> and uh, I first met her I, I, I got pretty good at spotting trans or lady boys in Thailand and I you know the bills went off when I first met her but I went through the motions went, went had dinner you know had nice conversation nice person I'm not going to marry I, I, I want to marry a woman I'm sorry ah, kill me if you must ah. Um, so that was one. The other two were blatant scammers. Just scammers. They're just working their little business angle to try to get whatever they could get. Take them to dinner and uh, making small talk. And they get a call. Oh, it's my mom. She's sick. She must go to the hospital right now. We don't have any money. I don't want money from you, you know, because I don't want to be a Filipina girl that asks for money. But of course they do. So, out of the year, out of all those girls, I met three. And all three were complete write-offs. Complete and total write-offs. And that's what you're going to get from the dating apps. So you're far better off to go out, go to restaurants, go to go hang out in restaurants that are next to call centers because they speak English, most of them. And they have a job and they can afford their own taxi, sort of. At least a jeepney, you know. Um, you're going to meet higher quality of girls doing that and more of them by just going out in the world, walking around, smile, say, hi, how you doing? Uh, a lot of guys here will carry a little card, just their name and their WhatsApp number, something like that. And if they're talking for a minute and they're, and they're hitting it off and, and they'll say, hey, uh, you know, I'm sorry, I, I got to go, but, uh, you know, maybe we can talk some other time. And here, here's my card, you know, you can just uh, send me, just just say hello on WhatsApp, you know. And somewhere around 80% will say, okay, and, and we'll actually do it. They actually follow through. Somewhere around 80% will do that, follow through. And then you've actually met in person. Um, very often you will have seen where they work, that they do in fact work. Um, you've seen what they look like, how they sound, if they're intelligent, how they move, you know, that 
that breaks down a lot of barriers right there in the first three minutes. So you're far better off to just do that. Just force yourself, just get out, just get the hell out of the condo, out of the hotel, whatever, walk around. Certain places you should go to, certain places you shouldn't go to, don't go to the bars, don't go to the freaking bars, don't go to the bars, don't go to the bars, don't go to the bars. We'll cover that in another one. Um, but just remember, even girls with a real job, they can be scammers too. I've run into a number of those. Yeah, they're making enough money to live on, but they want more because they know that you're loaded. You're filthy rich beyond their wildest dreams. And what's a few 10,000 pesos here and there once or twice a week? That's nothing to you, and it really helps their life, you know. And okay. We be done. We're going to do more of these. So just watch the channel. Ten. Currently, it's on 10 Beers Travel Channel. You can also go to stockphotosworldwide.com and find them there. They're listed on one of the pages there under uh, Retire Southeast Asia, I think. The, the subheading like that, something like that. Fish around, you'll find them. Um, all the tapes are copyright 2024 stockphotosworldwide.com and uh, they're on the, on the YouTube uh, 10 Bears Travel Channel. They're on there for the, for the time being until YouTube jerks us for some stuff stupid, innocuous thing we've said, and, and it's pretty much guaranteed we will, you know, eventually. All right. Thank you very much, and uh, good evening from South Pacific. This is technically the South Pacific, right? Manoa? I think so. Pretty sure. I mean, you, you know, we're close to the equator. No, wait a minute. South Pacific has to be south of the equator, right? I'm not sure. Well, we can see it. You know, you go to the top of my building, you look out there over the ocean, you can see it. it's a black line. You see it. It's a black line runs across the ocean. It's, it's an equator. I, you know, in real life, it's not labeled. It doesn't actually have letters that say equator, but it's a black line, you know. And you know when you cross it. Yeah, I think we're technically not South, South Pacific. I, I got to look that up. Hm. Okay. Thank you very much. And uh, good evening from... Vanilla and good with the camera. Good night.